guys, so today I am here to do my November wrap up. I am filming this a couple of days early. It's only the 26th of November. So if I read any more books, um, I might just add it to the end of this video or I might just add it to my December wrap up. Um, but I have already read 11 books this uh, month and I'm at home so I will be leaving most of these books here so I figured I would just film it now to get it out of the way and have all the books with me so I can talk about them um, but yeah I read 11 books this month which is crazy I think I read everything on my TBR because yeah I also DNF'd three books so I'm gonna be talking about all of those books with you guys so the first book that ended up finishing this month was The Power by Naomi Alderman I had really high hopes for this book and very unfortunately they fell pretty flat. Um, I did not enjoy this book that much. I thought it was a big disappointment. I really loved the premise of this book and the first 50 pages totally gripped me but then it went in a, just a way that I just was not entertained by. I just, I, I just didn't like it that much. I didn't really enjoy the writing style of this book. I felt like the author very much kept us at an arm's length away from the characters and I don't know, I just wasn't a big fan of the writing. It wasn't very pretty, it wasn't very good and yeah, I just, I thought the premise of this book was excellent and I was pretty disappointed. I think I only gave this about a two and a half out of five stars. The next couple of books I read, I did read like throughout the month, but I'm just gonna talk about them all right now. I read all three books in the Wayward's Pines series by Blake Crouch. I only have the first two here because I actually left the third one at college to read when I got back, but um, I couldn't wait, so I downloaded it on my phone on my Kindle like app, and I read it immediately just on my phone you, you, so you know this was a really good series. I gave the first book I believe a four and a half out of five stars, the second book a 4.25 out of five stars, and the third book a 4.75 out of five stars. I adored this series. It is so good. Oh my god. It's like, I must just say, it isn't something you'll go into and be like, oh my god, this beautiful literature, this beautiful writing, oh my god, all these metaphors. Um, it's just really freaking entertaining. It is such a good book series just for entertainment. So I'll talk about the first book because obviously the second and third book uh, will be spoilers if I talk about them. Um, so this first book follows a man named Ethan and he gets into a car crash while he is going into a uh, town where he believes his ex cop partner has been either kidnapped or killed or something has happened to her because she went to this town earlier in the week and she hasn't been able to like be contacted. So he goes to this place and it's called Wayward Pines and when he gets there he's in a car accident and he loses all of his memories for a little bit there and then when he finally starts to regain his memories he is very very confused as to where he is and what is going on because this town is kind of fishy. This town is surrounded by a giant wall fence um, that is electrified so people can't get in or out and as well as the roads never leave the town. So obviously this guy is a, I believe he's an ex-military man, he was a policeman, and he's like a secret agent kind of thing. And so obviously he's not just going to sit around and be okay with any of this. It's not in his personality. So he goes out and tries to figure out what the hell is going on in this town. This series, just the second you start it, like I wasn't that impressed by the first book until probably 100 pages in, and then it gets so good. Like the writing is not amazing. I would definitely say Dark Matter by Blake Couch is a lot better written, but it is just so entertaining. Obviously, I read the uh, second and third books right back to back basically, and I just couldn't stop reading. I was so hooked. I would actually say this first book is a great setup and I did rate it higher than the second book, but the second and third book are really entertaining. The second book, it takes a little bit longer to get into it, but the third book is just action and action and action and it doesn't stop. It's so, so good. Um, and this is just a really, really interesting take on a thriller, sci-fi, mystery kind of crime thing. And I'm not a big fan of crime uh, books, which is why I didn't think I was gonna like this that much. And I was so impressed. So I cannot highly recommend these enough. I just go and buy, if you're gonna buy the first one, maybe start with the first one and read it. And then you're gonna want the second and third book immediately like don't buy just the second book go out and buy the third book also like together you're gonna because you're gonna you're not gonna want to stop after the second book you're gonna want to keep going so that is my recommendation read the first book see if you like it and then go and buy the second and third book together because 
you can't stop. You can't, you just can't. <laughs> The next book that I read was for my Shakespeare literature class and that is Othello by Shakespeare. I don't have it with me because I left that school because I need to write an essay on it. Um, I've already read Othello a couple of times now. Um, it's not one of my favorite Shakespeare plays but this teacher has definitely turned me on my head on what I thought I liked about Shakespeare. Um, like I actually talked about Hamlet last month in my wrap up and I already like have edited my review and stuff because this teacher made me love Hamlet when I was a person who was not that impressed by it. Um, so I'm thinking he might make me love Othello, so I'm not totally sure, because he says Othello is one of his favorite um, plays. So I'm very interested to see how he teaches it, and if I like it any better after um, I learn a bit from him. Because yeah, Hamlet went from like a three star to a five star with his lectures, so. Othello, I originally, I think I gave it like a three out of five stars, because it's just never been my favorite Shakespeare play, but again, I'm very interested to see what he does with it. The next two books are ones that I read for a class and that is Odds Against Tomorrow by Nathaniel Rich and Flight Behavior by Barbara Kingsolver. Honestly, I didn't like either of these books that much. I gave them a two and a half out of five stars, which is a shame because I have to write like a 12 page essay on these books. Um, but they are basically, we were learning about climate fiction while we read these. And I must say, Barbara Kingsolver, I'm actually a big fan of. I've read quite a few of her books so far and this one, was just so bad. I just, it was so boring. Um, and this one would have been good if the writing was better. It was a very interesting plot, but the writing was so bad. I, I don't know why my teacher, who I believe is like one of the most, one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life, like likes these books so much because I could not find much good in them. But I have to write an essay on them, so. <sighs> The next book that I read was a continuation from last month where I read the first book and so this month I picked up the second book in this series, One Dark Throne by Kendra Blake. Um, I read the first one last month. Uh, I can't talk obviously too much about this one because it is the second book um, but last, the first book I gave I think a three and a half out of five stars and I gave this one also a three and a half out of five stars but for very different reasons. The first book was really boring <laughs> if I'm completely honest for like 300 out of the 400 pages um, but it was really good at character development and setting and like world building and stuff like that um, and while this one was action and action and action and action we got like no character development we got like it was just a lot of plot um, so I wish she would kind of <laughs> balance these two things a little bit more because I do actually quite enjoy these uh, I'm not that big into fantasy YA anymore or either of those genres in general um, so I am impressed I am do want to keep with this series um, if you guys don't know it's about three sisters tri triplets who are born and they have to fight to the death to become a queen um, and yeah this book definitely got pretty real so I am interested to see the third one but I do hope she kind of fixes this balance thing because the first book was too much of one thing and nothing and then this book is like too much of the other thing so I hope she fixes this. The next book I read, I think I have a slightly unpopular opinion about, but like, it's not even that unpopular, so I don't, I don't know. But I read The Unseen World by Liz Moore. Everyone has been giving this a 5 out of 5 stars. I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. That is simply because I wasn't impressed at all by the first 200 pages. Like, the first 200 pages were boring as hell to me. I just, I could not get into it at all. I own, the only reason I read this book within like the matter of a couple days was because I had like a five and a half hour shift at work that I didn't do anything but read. Um, and the last chunk of it, I think this is like a 500, 400 page book, almost 450 pages. So the last 250 pages were so good because originally it, with the first 200 pages I would have given this like a 2.5 out of 5 stars um, but the last chunk totally saved it um, and I just I really really liked this book in the end but I do think I have an unpopular opinion just because I wasn't the biggest fan of the very beginning while a lot of people say it's very much like an emotional punch I'm just not a person that gets very emotional over books I don't know I just wasn't that impressed by the beginning but the ending really did impress me so I did end up giving it a four out of five stars um, and I do highly recommend this this is a very very good book but that's what I'm saying I'm like I, I never understand when people are like, oh my god, a four out of five star, that's like, you hated it. I'm like, no, I really freaking liked this book. I just didn't like the beginning that much. Um, so I don't think that's that unpopular of an opinion. But whatever, I did really, really enjoy this book. This book is about a young girl who... <sighs> 
See, the reason, the thing is, I did not know much about this book going into it because I feel like no one gives a synopsis because it's very hard to. This book is about a girl who has been raised by her single father. Um, she doesn't go to school, he just teaches her. He's a scientist. Um, and basically something starts to happen with him that alters her life and this book goes back and forth between when she's a child and when she's an adult. And it's kind of her finding things out about her father and also technology and it's got the smidgest amount of sci-fi. Yeah, it's really good. I do really recommend this book. I just wasn't impressed with the first 200 pages. So if you're like me, it does get way better after like the 200 page mark, so. The next book I read was a buddy read with my friend Graham, who is Mega Man Chief fan. I don't know, I don't think he does YouTube anymore, but I do still talk to him and everything, and we did a buddy read this month of Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. This book has probably been on my, like, want to read list on Goodreads for, like, the longest amount of time. Like, it has been on there since, like, I started booktube, basically. I just never got to the book because, honestly, as time went on, I was kind of like, do I even want to read this? But then he mentioned that he really wanted to, so I was like, sure, I'll finally give it a chance. I got on my Kindle for, like, $1.99, so why not? I must say, I, again, I wasn't impressed <laughs> with the beginning, but the ending totally saved this book. I am very much in ending is a make or break um, kind of thing because a lot of books lose a star with the ending and a lot of books gain a star with the ending. So this book was a solid two out of five stars for me. I didn't really like it that much. It was just okay. Um, and again, people are always like two out of five stars. That's horrible. Um, on Goodreads, if you like hover over it, it says a two out of five star is it was okay. So two out of five stars for like the majority of the book, but the ending was so good. The ending gave me like shivers and like it takes a lot to bring out any kind of reaction from me with a book whether it's laughing, crying, or like getting the chills kind of thing. Um, and this ending totally gave me the chills. Like it was really freaking good mostly because I wasn't expecting it. This book follows I believe it's like the last execution in Iceland and it follows the woman who is to be killed. Um, and kind of it follows her talking about her side of the story kind of thing and she lives with this family and all of that stuff and yeah the ending was amazing I didn't like the most of the book but Graham loved it so if you are interested in it I do highly recommend it because I do think I'm in the major minority of it I think the majority of people really like this book but I'm just a, not a fan of really emotional slow stories that's why I didn't like the beginning of The Unseen World so there you go, three out of five stars to this one. And the last book that I read so far this month, we'll see if I add anything to the ending, was The Nakano Thrift Shop by Hiromi Kawakami. Hiromi Kawakami is interesting to me. I read her other book, Strange Weather in Tokyo, over the summer. And I really, I, I did enjoy that one. I think I gave it a three and a half or four stars and I gave this one a three and a half out of five stars. And they're just strange because I really don't know why I like them or if I even really do like them. Her stories are very quiet stories. They're very human stories. They are very realistic and very honestly just boring because they are kind of about just like regular people. Um, mostly, I, at least with these two books that I have read of hers, it's like kind of, the best way to describe it is like it's a short story collection but about the same characters and that they connect. They're very episodic, like each chapter is like an episode of like a TV show. I feel like you could probably read one chapter of this book and like get a full story out of it kind of thing. And I'm just not a big fan of short stories, so that's why I'm wondering if I don't enjoy these as much because of that. But I did enjoy it. I do really like her writing style. I really like how human her characters are, and I really like how quiet her stories are. But I also do find them really boring, so I don't really know why I keep going for back for more. I don't know if I will pick up another one after this, but I did like this. I did. I did like it. I gave it a three and a half out of five stars, so... I do suggest these, but like, I don't think they're gonna be what people expect them to be. They're very quiet, they're very slow, they're kind of boring. But if you like that, you'll really enjoy these, so. 
So those are all of the books that I have read this month. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and if you have read any of these books or want to read any of them definitely leave down in the comments below all your thoughts on them and uh yeah I mean that I did a pretty good stack of reading this month. I'm pretty proud of myself and I am right on track for my reading goal of 2017. Um I upped it to 102 books like last month so I am well on my way to completing that. But yes anyways I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and I love you all and I'll see you all soon. Bye!